A few days back, we carried a report on a new challenger to Aung San Suu Kyi's rule in Myanmar. The country goes to polls in November. And we told you about Dr. Thet Thet Khain of the People's Pioneer Party. She was once a member of Suu Kyi's political party. She is now fighting against her in the upcoming general election. Earlier this evening, I spoke with Dr. Khain. I asked her about the key issues she's fighting on, the state of Rohingya crisis in Myanmar, the role of the military and the government, the charges of genocide against the Myanmar military, and Aung San Suu Kyi herself. Also, the threat of Chinese investments in our country. Here are some excerpts from our conversation. Dr. Khain, welcome to Beyond. And thank you for interviewing me. The headlines are calling you a lady who's challenging the lady of Myanmar. Uh, do you see yourself as the main challenger to Aung San Suu Kyi? The lady, Do Aung San Suu Kyi, is ki kind of influential leader. Uh, and then that the party is solely based on her image, her, 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 her reputation. And then uh, what we see, the need of the country is we should have the programmatic party in our country uh, so that we decided to form our party as the, as the programmatic party. Myanmar came under a lot of criticism for the persecution of ethnic minorities in the Rakhine state. In the past, you've called the international media's reaction an overreaction. Do you believe that the government was complicit in what happened in Rakhine? The Rakhine case is very deeply rooted and complex. And then it will not uh, be soft uh, overnight. And then it's very complicated, very complex and deeply rooted. At the same time, uh, we, uh, we, have, we, have, uh, we, we have very diverse uh, co community in our country. No, that's fine. That's fine. I'm sure uh, Myanmar is a very diverse country and I'm sorry to interrupt you there. But the fact is that tens of thousands of people in the Rakhine state had to leave home and they came under attack from some forces in the country. My limited question, madam, is do you believe the government of Aung San Suu Kyi was part of that crackdown that forced these people to leave their country? Actually, I don't know exactly uh, because it's happening within the government. What I can see from far is uh, we have very bad, we have very bad civil military relations. This is my assumption. Uh, maybe the military suggested the civilian government uh, to, to put Rakhine, Northern Rakhine under martial law uh, because of the, the security situation. The leader of Myanmar has been called an army apologist. Uh, she went to the ICJ, the International Court of Justice, in December last year to defend Myanmar's military generals. And she said genocidal intent cannot be the only hypothesis for the actions of the military generals. Do you agree with her? Yes. Yes, I I don't think I don't think military uh, military committed the genocide or ethnic cleansing. It's the overreaction over the security crisis in northern Rakhine state. Overreaction by whom? Overreaction by the military towards the security crisis in in the northern Rakhine state. And the Myanmar government, do you think, at some point did not fully cooperate with the United Nations fact-finding mission? Uh, that is also my question. Actually, actually, we should be cooperating with the fact-finding mission of UN. I, I don't know why the, 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 the incumbent government is uh, tr trying to refuse. You believe there was a cover-up and the government was involved? I don't have the exact answer for this uh, because, uh, because they, they don't talk each other and then we don't see any cooperation between military and then civilian government. That is why all the chaos are happening. 600,000 Rohingya still remain in Myanmar, but they do not have the right to vote. They are disenfranchised. Does anyone care about it or do they not matter in this election? There are the people uh, who are very recent illegal migrants from Bangladesh. Uh, Bangladesh, they don't, uh, they, 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 they don't recognize our flag. Uh, they don't they don't respect our local culture they, they they don't speak our local language and then these all people are kind of illegal migrants we have to differentiate two 
two two kind of two groups of people even though they are bengali muslims are growing chinese investments in myanmar a cause of worry for you actually not necessarily chinese investors whoever investors coming into our country and then we need infrastructure development and then we need foreign direct investments and we need this kind of national projects uh, uh, the, the working together with the, the foreign investors and, and then so long as we are addressing uh, to the local people local community requirements and then the development of the local business community at the same uh, what i want to talk is uh, the we want to seek win win situation are you not concerned about the debt that comes along with chinese money we are concerned about that that is why we 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 are pushing our government uh, for the the contract negotiation uh, in contract negotiation uh, we should have we should have terms and conditions which are equally favoring the investors as well as our country that the, as as a host and, and for local community dr tetet khan thanks very much for joining us here on vion thank you so much